Okay, we're ready to start? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, Jim, and welcome everyone. Thank you for attending tonight. Um, I'm really always thrilled and happy to talk about my maestro, Don Elicio Ponti of San Antonio Village in Cayo District, Belize. Don Eligio across Belize was always known as El Maestro, the teacher. He was known as El Mero, the very, very one. He was numero uno, number one in all things to do with medicinal plants and Maya medicine. And of course, our very beloved Don Eligio. This particular photograph is rather iconic. It was taken by a friend of mine who was the Dean of the Art Institute of Chicago, Carol Becker, at the time that she took this photograph. And it has uh, followed us for many years. This was taken in uh, 1990. Uh, Don Eligio was uh, 90 years old at the time. And I think you can see what a fabulous face he had, very, very Maya features. And this was just a few years into my apprenticeship with him, which lasted 13 years. So just in case you're not familiar with the small nation of Belize, this is the Caribbean Sea. This is Cayo District where our story takes place. And right around here, around San Ignacio town, in here in this area was San Antonio where Don Eligio lived. And we were only five miles apart from each other. I originally went to Belize in uh, 1976. I was a, um, I had been in Mexico for seven years and I, went to Belize where my daughter was born the following year. Crystal was born on Crystal Ray Road in 1977, and I have lived there ever since. <clears throat> I think it's good to say right now, I am not an anthropologist. I am not an academic, certainly am not an archeologist. I am a doctor of nepropathy which is an offshoot of chiropractic from 1907. Nepropathy was started by a chiropractor who thought that at the time chiropractic was too violent. So he set about to establish a more gentle approach and called it nepropathy because he was from, the, from Czechoslovakia and napravit means to repair and of course pathy is suffering. I also want to say that Don Eligio passed away 27 years ago. And this is a very big story to tell in a very short time. So I will do my best and I hope you enjoy the beautiful photographs that we have to share. This is a photograph taken of Don Eligio in the 1940s when he was an assistant to the archeologists who were doing their work at Tikal. So it's the only photograph we have of a younger Don Eligio who lived to the age of 103. This photo is on the wall at Blancano Lodge. And we managed to um, squeeze out just Don Eligio's photograph when he was there in Tikal working on the on the digging and the um, working on, on the temples. So that's our young Don Eligio, probably around the age of, he was born in 1893, lived until 1996. So I imagine he was already about 45 at this time. This is um, how Don Eligio looked when I first met him in 1983, I began my apprenticeship with him that lasted until he passed away. Don Eligio was a traditional healer. He was a shaman. Of course, in Maya, shaman is Hemen. Hemen, as I understand it, means he or she who knows. 
there are female hymens and there are male hymens. Guess the best translation is shaman. He was a great and famous herbalist. Don Eligio knew at least perhaps more than 500 medicinal plants in his living memory. He was also a great jokester. Don Eligio was the true Dr. Clown. He always said, most people think too much. If you can get them to laugh, half their trouble and sickness will go away and the blessed herbs will do the rest. So his routine in his clinic was usually, where are you from? What's your ailment? Why are you here? Then he would get the herbs for them or he might do the massage. He might do his Maya acupuncture. Whatever the treatment was, he would get it all ready and then he would start his show, his entertainment. He loved to make people laugh and he had a regular routine like any clown. So he might go through his uh, normal routines. He might have a new one when a client came in. But I remember his, um, his client saying, Don Eligio, stop, stop. You're making me laugh so much. My stomach hurts. I'm a sick person. I can't laugh so much. So laughter was a um, huge part of Don Eligio's work in his little clinic in San Antonio. Somehow, let's see. And this is Don Eligio in his little clinic in a quite unfinished cement house that his grandchildren built for him after his, his wife of 65 years passed away in 1984. I met him in 1987. And this is his, uh, his little house was 10 by 10 and it was two rooms. So his clinic was a five by 10 room. And on the other side is where Don Eligio slept. And this house is like, there's the San Antonio road on the way to the mountain Pine Ridge and to Caracol. So I always thought of it as the house of, um, the of the of the the house of of uh, wood, sorry, the house of wood, the house of straw, and the house of cement, the three little pigs basically. So this is where Don Eligio lived in this little cement house, ten by ten. This is the house that he lived in when his wife was alive, and this was the kitchen. When I knew Don Eligio, this was the house where his patients slept. Sometimes people came to stay with Don Eligio for as long as a month. He, interestingly, he was also the point of refuge for abused women from Mexico or Guatemala. I remember uh, one lady who escaped from her domestic violence from Guatemala she brought three children with her and stayed with Don Eligio for three months. Don Eligio fed them, cared for them, and healed them. And when the husband came to collect her, he sat him down and had a very, very stern conversation with him that if you are not good to this woman, she will come back and she can spend the rest of her life here with me. So Don Eligio had more than sometimes 100 clients a week come to this humble little reserve in San Antonio. This is the other little house here where many of his clients uh, lived and also where he stored all of his medicines. This is the hearth where his teas were, perform were uh, prepared and also where we would get the coals to burn the copal. Burning copal was a big part of his spiritual healing as well. So this is in San Antonio, the little thatch hut that this roof was 50 years old when I first met Don Eligio. And by that time, he said he was just too old and too stiff to change the roof. So he lived with this, he, this is where he stored his herbs, but every day 
we had to move the bags of herbs because the rain was coming in through the roof. And so <clears throat> he had anywhere from 50 to 100 clients per week. It was usually 30 people a day who came from all over Central America, from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. They came on foot, they came on horse, they came in uh, buggies, they came in taxi cabs. Uh, all day long, Don Eligio treated clients from noon until late evening. All morning, he spent in the bush collecting his medicine. Here are some of his medicine bags containing barks, roots, and vine. This is a scene within one of those huts. That's me there, Don Eligio. And you see the patient standing around. This is a sack of of jackass bitters, Neurolena lobata, which we are destemming in order to uh, heat it up over the uh, the stove to make his uh, very very effective powder for serious wounds like the diabetic wound. This was part of my uh, work for Don Eligio was to collect jackass bitters, Neurolena lobata put it over that hearth that you saw and reduce it to a powder and then push it through a sieve. And that powder of jackass bitters would be, would be put, placed over the very, very worst of wounds and even diabetic sores. This chair is very important. You see how the chair has a very odd inclination to it. This is the chair that clients sat in to get his abdominal massage. Don Eligio's abdominal massage was quite famous. People came again from all over Central America to receive this abdominal massage that treated all forms of gastritis complaints, uh, constipation, and most especially the misplaced uterus. So that became a and still to this day is, is a very large part of my professional life is doing the work of abdominal therapy and teaching other people to do it. But Don Eligio had this chair made so that people could lay back and then he could massage the abdomen, all right? Now, um, I met Don Eligio in 1984 in 1987, he said, it's time to do a premisia. So this is the ceremony that Don Eligio performed on my farm, Old Ischel Farm, on the Macal River, about five miles uh, by road from his village in San Antonio. So the premisia is a Maya ceremony to the nine Maya spirits actually the nine benevolent Maya spirits, because Don Eligio said there are nine malevolent Maya spirits who inhabit the lo lower world. The benevolent nine Maya spirits inhabit the upper world. So after knowing each other for three or four years, Don Eligio accepted me as his apprentice and said that it was time to introduce me as his disciple to the nine Maya spirits, who are the oversoul of the Maya people. That's the, the sun god, King Ischel, the goddess of uh, childbirth, the moon and fertility, uh, Kanan Kash, the goddess of the forest, Kanan King, the sun god. And so there are nine of them. So here we see nine gourd bowls, each one for the Maya spirits. Don Eligio is dispensing the atole made with corn. There is copal burning under the table. And so Don Eligio chanted the Maya chant of the Primicia in order to introduce me to the Maya spirits as his disciple. And he asked, he told me later that he asked the Maya spirits that they would give me every consideration that they would him. 
So it's impossible to explain the feeling of a great person, Don Eligio Panti, mentioning your name in a Maya chant. So it was a very um, moving uh, ceremony. And at that time then is when my official apprenticeship began with Don Eligio. So what did we do? Every uh, morning, every week, I spent uh, four nights and three days with Don Eligio for seven years. After that, I went six years, one day a week to spend the time with him in San Antonio. So it was a 13 year apprenticeship. And during the first seven years, I would arrive in the afternoon and in the next morning we would be out and about about 6 a.m. By dawn, we were up and then we would walk 90 minutes to the mountains above San Antonio, collecting medicinal plants all morning, bring them home in the afternoon, chopping and drying to put in those sacks that you saw earlier for his clients. So here we are collecting Don Eligio's most often used medicinal plant, which was skunk root or paiche, paiche in Maya, chiococa alba. So you see it here. This was the root that Don Eligio collected to ward off evil. As an American herbalist and a doctor of nephropathy, I never really understood what ward off evil means until I began my apprenticeship with Don Eligio. This root is very dark, as you can see. It really literally smells like a skunk. It's very deep and hidden. And also it is very difficult to unearth. And that is so symbolic of the dark, dark um, um, ailments that Don Eligio treated with this, especially envy, which is a very uh, devastating disease in the Maya system, envy or invidia, and then maldad. Maldad means basically evil. When people are angry at others or they feel so much jealousy and envy that they actually um, have curses put on other people. It was extremely common and it was something that was completely foreign and new to me. And I really didn't believe it when I first started with Don Eligio, but eventually I had to admit that yes, evil magic, black magic and curses do exist. And this was the route that Don Eligio used for that purpose. Symbolic that the root is dark, hidden, occult, and foul, very much like those dark arts. However, the, the, the vine of this root grows, grows really like an arbor over the root system, and the flower is white as snow, and so is the berry. And I always thought this was so symbolic of light over darkness and that light prevails. <laughs> so, so here we are, home from the hunt. This photo was taken by Dr. Michael Ballack, who I will introduce to you later. We are here carrying home Don Eligio. You see that heavy sack that he's carrying? carrying home the skunk root and also some of these vines and some of the plants that we collected. My sack is full of leaves for herbal bathing. One of my jobs as the apprentice to the Maya shaman was to collect a 50 pound sack once every day, sometimes literally three times a day, I would have to fill a 50 pound sack with medicinal leaves. Those leaves were mostly used for herbal bathing. Herbal bathing was a very important aspect of Don Eligio's Maya medicine. All babies, no matter what the ailment, received 
herbal baths. And the herbal bath was made up of nine different medicinal plants. The piperaceae species, known as cordoncillo or, or buttonwood in Belize, had to be four of the nine. Now, many people ask, I imagine all of you who are listening tonight are aware that number nine was very important within the Maya medical system. Because as I understand it, all numbers from zero to 13 are all gods and goddesses. So number, Don Eligio said number four and number nine, four plus nine is 13, were the highest of those number gods and goddesses. So we always collected nine leaves, the people took their baths for nine days. There were teas that were drunk for nine days. And in order to cure those um, issues, those uh, diseases like um, the maldad, the evil, that was also a nine day treatment. So this is on the way back from collecting medicine on our way back to San Antonio. Now, here we are again collecting the the uh, skunk root. And uh, I have to say, I remember very well that Don Eligio was very impressed that I could handle a pick and a shovel. So I think I've already explained the uses of the skunk root as a tea for spiritual ailments like envy, the old evil eye, maldad, and for any and all unknown ailments. Whenever Don Eligio had a client whose symptoms seemed confusing to him, whose uh, ailment he did not understand, the first remedy was skunk root. Drink skunk root and come back in nine days. So it was a um, essential aspect of, of his uh, clinic and we had to collect skunk root all the time. I'm happy to say that on this very day here, Don Eligio said this was the largest skunk root he had ever found in his 50 years of collecting on that mountainside. And he said, that's because you're with me today. And I said, why would that be? And he said, because Ischel, the Maya goddess of medicine, smiles on the male healer if he walks in the forest with the woman. And I said, who's Ischel? And that was 30, that was the first step on a 30-year research project for me personally to discover about Ischel, the Maya goddess of healing. So this is what I learned in Don Eligio's clinic, what Maya medicine is about. In Don Eligio's clinic, these were the physical ailments and these were the spiritual ailments. Number one was gastritis that he knew as Ciro, C-I-R-O. He said there were three types of gastritis. Red gastritis, when you see blood in the stool. White gastritis, when you see mucus. And dry Ciro or gastritis, when you have constipation. I would say that of those 100 clients per week, Probably 50 of them came with gastritis, and Don Eligio said it all began when refrigeration came to Belize. He said, now you see people drinking cold, cold things on a hot day. You see them uh, sucking on the, the ideals, the popsicles, and inside your body is very warm, and you throw this ice down into your stomach, and that, he thought, was the primary cause of gastritis. Menstrual problems, many of his clients were women. I would say about 50% were women, and most of them came for menstrual problems. No menstruation, late menstruation, dry menstruation, excessive menstruation. And Don Eligio treated gastritis and menstrual problems with that very, very effective and brilliant abdominal massage that he did, of course, externally. 
and he would do the upper abdomen and then he did the lower abdomen, especially for women, because, because he said that the menstrual problems and the fertility issues were all due to the misplaced uterus, especially in Central America where, women, America, where women ride on the back of trucks and they're constantly bouncing. They have 14, 15, or 18 children within a 30 year period. So their uterus is very overstretched from the ligaments holding a large seven, eight pound baby and then they're pregnant again. So he thought that having babies too soon, too close together, did not allow sufficient time for the cuerdas, the cords, to come back into proper shape. Headaches, very uh, common. Fertility issues. Uh, Don Eligio, as I said, was a jokester. And he used to say to women, don't worry, don't worry. Here, we cure those who want and those who don't want, no problem. Lay that lay here and I will rub your belly and I will find where your uterus is. And if it's not in good position, I will put it in good position. And lo and behold, I feel like that was really one of the most important things that I learned in Don Eligio's clinic was how to correct the misplaced uterus. Parasites were very, very common as we would expect in the tropics. And for that, his primary uh, plant was the same jackass bitters, the Neuralena lobata. Skin conditions, you would expect, again, are common in, in the tropics. And that usually was a series of nine herbal baths taken with specific plants that usually are uh, antifungal, uh, antibacterial, common aches and pains. And for those, he had a uh, massage therapy that he did, as well as uh, pinchar with stingray spines, and also uh, cupping, what he called ventosa. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Diabetes is the number one ailment in all of Belize, probably Central America. For diabetes, Don Eligio recommended the Billy Webb Bark. Billy Webb Bark, <clears throat> Latin name will come to me in a minute. Uh, and uh, that was an extremely bitter tea. But fascinating that everybody with diabetes, diabetes did not find the Billy Webb tea bitter. And that was one of the diagnostic ways that he decided that it was diabetes. Most of the people came to him knowing that they had diabetes. The other thing he would do is have someone spend the night with him. And he would have them urinate into a uh, an overnight um, uh, night pot, palangana. And in the morning, if the ants were on the night pot, that was a clear sign of diabetes, obviously, because the urine is full of sugar and the ants came for the sugar. So these are the primary physiological complaints that Don Eligio treated. These are the spiritual ailments. So of those 100 or so clients per week, half were there for physical ailments, half were there for spiritual ailments. The number one spiritual ailment was susto or fright, what we think of as PTSD. When a person has been through a uh, trauma, a uh, sudden shocking event like a car accident or a shooting, a murder or a suicide, that's susto. Pesar is grief. That's something like susto. Nobody in the world escapes fright or grief. So those were um, daily occurrences in Don Eligio's clinic. And they were all treated with prayer, copal incense, incense, and herbal baths. All of these spiritual ailments. Copal as incense, prayer, and spiritual bath. Mal ojo, 
is the evil eye. That's something that occurs to you when people look upon your life with envy and jealousy. We all know I was raised in an Italian immigrant household and my grandmother always made me put a little piece of garlic in my Catholic scapula in order to protect me from malocchio. So when I heard the word evil eye, I already knew what that was from my childhood, malocchio. <clears throat> Coraje is anger. And so when there was domestic violence, Don Eligio treated the, usually the woman for susto and he treated the man for coraje or anger. Coraje is inappropriate anger wielded against the innocent. We have righteous anger. I think we should all be angry about the destruction of the environment. That is righteous, and there is the other anger, which is harmful and aimed at the innocent, like domestic violence. Envidia is envy, which is actually a very devastating disease. I had no idea how prevalent and how devastating it was, is, until I began to work with Don Eligio. And then the envy and the envidia began to happen to me regularly. So ever since then, I have always been working on healing and curing myself of envy and invidia because of my work with Don Eligio has actually engendered a great deal of envy within Belize. So I know what it's all about. Malvientos are evil winds. An evil wind one of the most common was the white stone man, el hombre blanco de piedra, the white stone man. Interestingly, the white stone man appeared on the bed of young girls who were about to begin their menstrual cycles. So grandmothers brought young girls to Don Eligio because they had been frightened by the white stone man. And Don Eligio said, it's common, it happens. He tends to appear to girls just before their menstrual cycle. What it means, I don't really know. But Don Eligio uh, worked with them with prayers, copal, spiritual baths, and he all sent them home with a little packet of copal and dried rosemary to burn as an incense in the room where the white stone man appeared. And finally, maldad or evil magic. As much as I wanted to deny its existence after years of being in Don Eligio's clinic, it was absolutely impossible to deny that evil magic does indeed exist and that people suffer greatly with that ailment. And it usually comes about as a result of extreme envy and jealousy or revenge. And people feel that they have to hire a necromancer. We hear these words and I never thought that I would actually be living with the reality of something like evil magic and a necromancer. Necromancer is someone you can hire to do evil magic to others. And Don Eligio always said, aquí en Belize es la mera mata. Here in Belize is the very source of that. And it primarily has to do with jealousy and envy. And this, these are Don Eligio's healing tools. Number one, primary is prayer. Don Eligio said <clears throat> way up until he was 101 years old, after the age of uh, 99, he was not able to go to the mountain any longer. But he said, I still have my most important healing tool, and that's prayer, oraciones. Faith was extremely important to Don Eligio. He would say, people come here to my clinic 
and they see the plants that I have. They see what I collect. They see my formulas, how I put them together. They think they can go home and make the same formulas, get the same plants, but they never collected the plants with faith and the prayer, which I will share with you in a moment. So the prayers were always said nine times. Again, we have the sacred number nine. Three prayers in the left pulse, and each ailment had its own prayer. So I would say Don Eligio taught me, I actually counted 27, nine different prayers for 27 different ailments. And then three prayers in the right pulse, three prayers in the left, and three prayers over the forehead. Of course, in order to say prayers, you must have faith in the deity to whom the prayers are addressed. And for Don Eligio, that was the nine benevolent Maya spirits, the great Holy Spirit, Ischel, and Mother Mary. As a young uh, man, he was raised as a Catholic Maya, and Mother Mary was a very important deity to him. I always felt like Mother Mary was his girlfriend. He talked about her all the time. Love? Don Eligio had a way of saying the best way to care for a patient is to care about the patient. So love, he would say, parate en amor, stand in love when you begin to treat a client. And it's something that I have never forgotten. Laughter, again, Don Eligio said, most people think too much. Get them to laugh and half their trouble and sickness will go away and the blessed herbs will do the rest. So he was the clown and the jokester and he loved, loved to entertain and make people laugh. Herbal teas, there were probably 25 primary vines, roots, and barks that and, and leaves that Don Eligio used in his daily clinic. Herbal teas were taken three times a day for nine days, especially for something like diabetes or gastritis or menstrual problems, three cups a day for nine days. Herbal baths were essential, especially for the spiritual ailments that we discussed earlier. And that would be done with nine different uh, leaves boiled up and then, then, then poured over the person, not soaking because hardly anybody has a bathtub in Belize anyway, but it was a splashing, splashing technique and those were done primarily for, again, spiritual ailments and for all babies and children, no matter what the ailment. Ventosa is the Maya system of cupping. Don Eligio grew a, a cotton tree in his front yard. And from that cotton tree, he harvested the pods, pulled out the cotton, and it was, it was a small, small, I wonder if it was a small cyber tree. That was at a time when I didn't really know the cyber tree, but it was a cotton tree. And perhaps it was a young cyber tree that never grew more than 12 feet tall. So he would take that cotton, a gla kitchen glass, and it had to be a thick glass. It could not be a thin glass thick one with with a rim around it and he had a piece of chewing gum <laughs> that he chewed up and stuck to the inside of the glass and then the cotton was pulled out thin and stuck up against the up against the chewing gum and then that was lit the cotton was lit which was one of my jobs because when I met him at the age of 90, his eyesight was failing seriously, so he might burn the client with the lighter. So I had to light the cotton, and then glass was popped down on the flesh, and then, like in Chinese cupping, the flesh pulled itself into 
the glass. And that was an important part of healing all aches and pains, especially of the back. Pinchar with stingray spines. Pinchar is like Maya acupuncture. I had a friend who came to study Maya acupuncture while I was with Don Eligio. She was an acupuncturist. And she said that Don Eligio's system of pinchar or, or uh, piercing with those stingray spines was about 80% similar to the Chinese system. Massage therapy for all those who came with musculoskeletal problems, which are common in Belize because people work really hard, they perspire a lot, and, and the weather is often changing. So while a worker is out in the field uh, planting corn or, or harvesting corn and he's perspiring, and then all of a sudden the clouds come over and a, and a big viento or a wind comes, like what we think of as wind invasion causes cramps. So he was an excellent massage therapist. Copal and rosemary incense was part of Don Eligio's spiritual healing process. The copal was usually brought from Melchor in Guatemala and the rosemary as well. And that combination was what I still use to this day. Amulets. Protecciones were very important because they could ward off envy. And I'll show you a picture of what an amulet looked like. So then there were incantations, divinations with the sastun. And I'll show you Don Eligio's sastun as well. Incantations, encantar. The most common encant encantacion were grandmothers who brought photographs of students who were in secondary or tertiary school. And the grandmother would say to me, and I had to translate in Spanish to Don Eligio, I want to make this old man enchant this boy because he won't study. We're paying for him to go to college and he won't study. So I want you to make this boy study. And she hand Don Eligio a photograph. And Don Eligio would take his sastun and roll it around the photograph and do an incantation and to get the kid to do more study. And it did work. Divinations with the sastun, I'll show you that in a moment. So Don Eligio said that when the medicinal plants are collected, they have no power and no healing properties if they are not collected with prayer and faith. And this was Don Eligio's herb collector's prayer. Then he gave me permission to share that I use to this day and that I teach to all of my students. En el nombre de Dios Padre, Dios Hijo, Dios Espíritu Santo. Yo soy quien ando en el monte buscando la medicina para curar la gente. Doy gracias al espíritu de esta planta y tengo la fe con todo mi corazón en su gran poder de curar las enfermedades de la gente. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, I am the one who walks in the mountains to find medicine to heal the people. I give thanks to the spirit of this plant, and I have faith with all my heart in your great power to heal the sickness of the people. Don Eligio said, if you don't say the prayer of faith and thanksgiving to the spirit of the plant, the spirit of the plant stays in the earth and will not follow you home to do the healing. So that was a very important part of Don Eligio's work. And here he is saying the prayers for an infant. This infant is only nine months old and his mother is pregnant already. And the baby is crying and crying and crying because the mother had to take him off the breast because she is now pregnant again. So Don Eligio said that the baby had pesar or grief. So he's saying nine prayers by laying on of hands on the baby's body. Here's the sacred sastun. Sas 
in Maya means light or mirror. Tun is stone or age. Sastun is a stone of light, mirror of the ages, has so many different esoteric meanings. This was Don Eligio's Sastun that he had and used uh, with for incantations and divinations for 50 or 60 years of his practice. And it is a simple little glass, what looks like a glass marble, but it was a magic instrument that was teleported by the nine Maya spirits to him in San Antonio. His wife found it in a hammock one day when Don Eligio was returning from performing his ninth primicia, asking the Maya spirits to send him a sastun so that I can do your work really well. And so here is that magic Maya instrument, the sastun, and it is used to sacar la suerte, means check my luck. So do I have bad luck? Do I have good luck? To, to uh, quitar de maldad, ojo, and envidia. To remove evil, the evil eye, and envy from people. To empower the amulets that he made. It is a teleported crystal, the little jarrito. And then this crystal was found on Don Eligio's doorstep. The day after he had a dream, he was now 95 years old. And in this dream, Maya spirit came to him. And he said that during the Maya dream visions, there was always one Maya person dressed in complete regalia with the, um, with the jaguar pelts hanging off the belt, a spear, a very large headdress of Quetzal feathers, jade bracelets, jade anklets, jade necklace, and jade through the nose and the earrings. And in that dream, they said, old man, we see that you're working very hard and getting very tired. When you open your door in the morning, we will leave something for you that will give you more energy and help you to live longer. And that was this crystal. And he said, and in this crystal is the Virgin Mary. Don't ask me how or why, I don't know. But he said that his contemplation and his meditation was looking into this crystal to find the Virgin Mary. And here is the Sastun at work. There is an amulet that Don Eligio made when I met him, I made them for the rest of the 13 years of uh, my apprenticeship. There is the little jarrito in Don Eligio's hands, and he will take, the sastun is inside. He will rotate around and around and around and repeat the same incantation nine times. And that little amulet would protect people from envy, the evil eye, from jealousy, and maldad. I would say that we made 50 a week. So to come to Don Eligio to get a protection was a very uh, large part of Belizean society for a long time. So there's the Sastun, the sacred Maya healing stone at work. And here he would take, put it in the person's hand. If they came to uh, pull out their luck, he would rotate that around in the jarrito and he would say, is this good luck? Is this bad luck? Is this natural or is this evil? And then he would put it in the person's palm and then come out to the light to read what the Sastun said. Now, I, as Don Eligio's apprentice, never learned to read the Sastun. And I always felt, I believe that it's because I am a physician, not a magician. And Don Eligio's um, work carried a great deal of aspects to it that I did not want to follow. I did not want to have people coming to me 
seeking incantations. It was just not what I wanted to do. I'm a physician, a natural healer. I like to do body work. I love to do the spiritual healing that Don Eligio taught me. And Don Eligio gave me a sastun uh, for my 44th birthday. I only use it the way he showed me to use it to bless photographs. I do have a sastun, but I never do divination. I don't like it. It's just something that doesn't appeal to me and doesn't set right with me. And so I use it to bless and to bring strength and healing to those who are ill through photographs. There's Don Eligio's collection of stingray spines that he used for Maya acupuncture. I think one of the most dramatic events I saw with the stingray spines was the policeman of San Antonio who had chronic migraines. He came to Don Eligio for a cure and Don Eligio said, are you brave? <laughs> There's a policeman with a gun in his holster and he says, what do you mean am I brave? Yeah, I, I think I'm brave. And Don Eligio said, you have to be brave for this treatment. So he took those stingray spines and pull the flesh here, one, two, three, and you could hear it go pop, pop, pop. And in the center, pop, pop, pop. Over here, pop, pop, three times. And then Don Eligio pushed the policeman's head down and all this blood comes pouring out of it that had the most foul smell you could imagine. It smelled like dead meat. And when it hit the ground on the cement floor, it coagulated within seconds. And Don Eligio said to the policeman, there's your sickness. There it is right there on the ground. He came back for one more treatment. And as Don Eligio would say, adios dolor, goodbye pain. The migraines did not come back after that. Don Eligio is wearing sunglasses. Because at this point of his life, he's about 95 there. He had uh, cataracts. So the sun was kind of painful to his eyes. And around uh, 1987, five or six years into my apprenticeship, I sent a letter to Dr. Michael Ballack of the New York Botanical Garden telling him that I had met this wonderful old Maya traditional healer and that he is much, much more than I thought he was simply a herbalist. I only wanted someone to teach me about the medicinal plants of Belize. As a natural therapist and natural healer, I needed to know the medicinal plants. And I thought Don Eligio was a herbalist, but I did not know that Don Eligio represented one of the last living Maya shamans of Central America that really came as a complete surprise to me. So I wrote Dr. Ballack, who is an ethnobotanist of the New York Botanical Garden saying I had met this wonderful, charming, funny old man in San Antonio, who seems to me to represent one of the last living Maya Jimenez of Central America. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to record this. I'm sort of, I'm afloat here. And I'm feeling concerned that he's already in his 90s and felt like this really deserves to be recorded, archived, all of Don Eligio's knowledge, as much as we could capture, should be archived for the Maya people, for the Belizean people, and for the world. So Michael Bellick was on my doorstep within two weeks, and there began the Belize Ethnobotany Project. Dr. Balik had a research project from the National Cancer Institute to collect medicinal plants in Belize for cancer and AIDS research at Washington. While we were collecting plants for the National Cancer Institute, we would sit with traditional healers, record all of the names of the plants, their uses, their contraindications, stories, and myths, how many cups of tea, how do you make a powder for a wound, and therefore then we would collect herbarium specimens. 
and we collected five specimens to be dried for every medicinal plant that we collected in the forest. So the National Cancer Institute had three strategies to find cancer, potential cancer healing agents within the rainforest. Number one was simply to send a botanist into the forest and collect everything in flower. That's called random collections. Number two, to only collect plants in flower whose families have already given chemical compounds. And our task, the third, was to talk to traditional healers to see if the medicinal plants that traditional healers use might have specific compounds that might have an effect on those 99 types of cancer cells and two AIDS viruses at the time. So the Belize Ethnobotany Project lasted for nine years with Dr. Balik as the principal investigator and me as his assistant. So here we are with Don Eligio doing ethnobotany and I we had collected plants. Don, uh, Dr. Balik has the plant in his hand. Don Eligio is giving us the information that we need. Uh, common names, uses, contraindications, stories, myths, and preparations. How is it administered? How many cups of tea for how many days? And so in the end, we were able to collect more than 3,000 medicinal plants in Belize. And Don Eligio gave us the information on 500 medicinal plants from his living memory. Don Eligio was a man who never went to school, never learned to read or write. In fact, he used to say, when he see me taking notes like I am there, he said, oh, they sent you to school. And I said, yeah, they sent me to a lot of school. I sent myself to school. And he said, you'll never learn. What do you mean I'll never learn? And he said, that stick, that piece of paper that makes your mind weak. I never had a stick. I never had a piece of paper. Pero aquí está lleno. Up here, it's full. And truly, it was truly full up in Don Eligio's head. Part of uh, Don Eligio's healing was copal incense. And this is his um, personal formula of dried rosemary and different grains of copal, brown grains, white copal, yellow copal, all came from Melchor. That was one of the tasks that I did for him was to identify vendors who could bring um, copal over the border. So in my time with Don Eligio, during those 13 years, I would say that there are two aspects of Maya medicine that have stayed with me. One is the Maya abdominal massage that now I teach all over the world because of its beneficial effects on all female complaints, menstrual complaints, ovarian issues, fertility issues, so gastritis, constipation, extremely useful. And here we are at a class in Nayarit, Mexico in 2023, bringing these sovada techniques to the Mexican people. Uh, unfortunately, in Mexico, medical doctors are, are, are um, decrediting traditional healers telling women, don't go see those massage therapists because they will hurt you. So I would say for the last 30, perhaps 50 years, this very incredibly sophisticated massage technique that is about 5,000 years old has been discredited. And therefore, Mexican women are afraid of the Maya abdominal massage. So it has been my personal goal to bring that back to Mexico. And this is actually the first time in 2023 that I was able to gather a group of students together to teach the Maya abdominal massage in Mexico. The other aspect that has stayed with me 
and that I continue to teach around the world is the Maya spiritual baths for fright, envy, for curses, with water, plants, prayer, and faith. So this is a Maya spiritual bath. There, there is the um, hibiscus. This is a plant called the flor de susto, the flower of fright. This is a combination of nine different flowers and leaves put together in a bucket of water with prayer. All of the plants were collected with Don Eligio's herb collector's prayer put into a bucket, and this is what a spiritual bath looks like. Now, I spent many an hour, many a day, many a year contemplating how does Don Eligio's spiritual bath relieve the effects of envy, grief, fright, and the evil eye. What's happening here, this is water, that has been blessed with prayer, filled with plants that have been blessed with prayer. And my best interpretation is that this is an auric cleansing. This is actually absorbing this negative energy, if you will, out of the energy field, the, the electromagnetic field of the person. And so it's not a soaking bath ever. It's always a splashing bath, it's known as a lustration. Lustration from luster, meaning to bring light. So the abdominal massage and the Maya spiritual healing have really meant the most to me that have stayed with me and how now I spend my later years teaching those techniques around the world. Here is our, our students in Mexico studying the abdominal massage. Here we are in Israel. This is the group of Maya massage therapists that um, have been taught by myself and our teachers within the Abdominal Therapy Collective. Now, when Don Eligio passed away in 1996, he passed away at 6.10 a.m. At 6.10 a.m., I had a dream. I was about five miles from where he was taking his last breath because we had brought him home from the hospital. My husband, who is a paramedic, unhooked all of his, um, his um, needles. We took him back to San Antonio put the suero back in, and then we left for the night so that he could spend the time with his family and his villagers, knowing that he most likely would not live through the night. That morning at 6.10, I had a dream. And in the dream, I see Don Eligio lying on the floor next to the bed where I'm sleeping. And he's an old, old man dying. He takes different breaths like, <sighs> then I know he's dead. He's dead right there on the floor. And he gets up. He gets up a young man with black hair, no wrinkles, a beautiful bronze face. And he sat down on the bed next to me. And I could feel the bed depress when he sat down. He put his arms around me, gave me a kiss on the cheek. And he said, with his hand pointing to the corner of the room. In the corner of the room was a little uh, stool, and on the stool was a young boy I know to be Gonzalo. Gonzalo's face changed to Mario. Mario's face changed to Juana. Juana's face changed to Maria. And Don Eligio said, take the children as if they were your own. Train them and teach them to help each other. And my husband and I thought about that for two years. And I remembered that my childhood growing up in the inner city of Chicago was very blessed by summer camp. So we thought that the best thing we could do was have a summer bush medicine camp for children. 
And so this is the very first one in 1996. And this month in July, we will have our 27th summer bush medicine camp. And here we have 20, 24 children and 12 uh, junior counselors earning money uh, during the summer to buy their high school books. And we teach them about medicinal plants and tr traditional healing. And they do spiritual baths on each other. They absolutely love learning about traditional healing and they take it home to their parents and they bring it into their schools and they bring it into their uh, churches as well. So we formed Each Child Tropical Research uh, with Dr. Michael Ballack. And these are the things that we are involved in in Belize. We have a program called Ethnobotany in the Classroom where we have a Belizean lady who takes plants into the classroom during the social study uh, program and talks to the children about their backyard garden medicinal plants. We have medicinal plant gardens in two or three different places where children and teachers plant the medicinal plants and learn about them as well. We had funds for traditional healers for many years and now all of the traditional healers who participated in the Belize Ethnobotany Project have all passed away. Our backyard garden plants, that was a very big project in the local schools where children interviewed their grandparents about what plants grow in their backyard. We had a Useful Plants of Belize exhibit for several years in which 2,000 school children would attend over a period of a week. We held seven traditional healers conferences in Belize. Our motto was, if you always wanted to know, come to learn. If you know, come to teach. So it was open mic for people to share with each other, for the traditional healers to have the spotlight. We've had 27 summer bush medicine camps. We have community workshops that are free in Belize, in Mexico, and Guatemala. And we have secondary and tertiary scholarships for students. Here we are doing a uh, class in medicinal plants down uh, with the Kechi in Southern Belize. This was their traditional healer who was, um, he explained to us that he was losing respect amongst his, his villagers because the modern medicine and injections and pills seem to be working so much faster. And he said, if you would come and give us a talk about the importance of traditional healing and medicinal plants, maybe it will last longer and I could get more respect. And then we also do uh, herbal classes for Belizeans within Belize. This is the class called Herbal Immersion. And we simply spend the entire week uh, teaching about medicinal plants, herbal bathing, and many of the things that Don Eligio taught me. Here's one of the traditional healers conferences that we sponsored at the San Ignacio Hotel in San Ignacio, this is Miss Juana Shish, a granny healer. And this is um, Mr. Cocom, who also was a traditional healer from San Antonio. Um, these are the books, Sastun, My Apprenticeship with a Maya Healer, was published by Harper Collins in 1994. So I was able to read the book to Don Eligio before he passed away. It was one of the very endearing um, times that we used to spend together when he was infirmed and hammock ridden. I would bring the book and read the story of our time together and his life. Rainforest Remedies, this was published with the New York Botanical Garden again in 1994 before Don Eligio passed away. Also now in Spanish, Remedios um, de la Selva, 100 Healing Herbs of Belize with illustrations, uses, contraindications, and 
it is a um, it's very inexpensive so that the most so that even poor people can afford to buy the book and learn about the medicinal plants growing in front of their house under their verandas. So the messages from the gods, a guide to the useful plants of Belize by Dr. Michael Ballack and myself, winner of the 2018 award for the Society of Economic Botany for an outstanding book in the field of ethnobotany. So this is the uh, written result of, of the ethnobotany project with the listing, the names, the uses, photographs, illustrations of about 3,000 medicinal plants of Belize. Michael Ballick called it messages from the gods because so many of the traditional healers told us that they were trained by their spirits through dream visions. So here I am with the uh, editor of the reporter, um, the, um, the, uh, the reporter in magazine, Mr. Harry, and giving him a free copy of the book. And I gave away 280 copies of the book all throughout Belize, teachers, libraries, uh, different uh, people in public office. So uh, Jim asked me to share some of the medicinal plants. This is the Mexican wild yam, Dioscoria bellicensis, Cocomeca, old man's beard. And of course, this is the plant that gave the world the birth control pill and cortisone, two of the most commonly prescribed medications of the world, the birth control pill and cortisol. Cortisol is the active principle in this plant, was, was eventually turned into cortisone. And it also, because it is a steroid molecule, was used as a basis to produce the birth control pill in the 1950s. This is a very common plant. If you've ever been to Belize, you know this plant. It's polyredhead, Hamelia patens, Ashkanan. Ashkanan means guardian of the forest because it only grows at the very, very edge of the forest as if it were the gatekeeper. Sana lo todo means cure all. Klaus Pim in Maya, and this is for all manner of skin condition, sunburn, kitchen burn as a herbal bath. Our humble little hibiscus is one of the most important healing herbs in Belize because this is what we use to um, stop uh, threatened miscarriages in women for excessive menstruation during the menstrual years and during menopause as well. And this is also a, um, a fabulous herb to include in any bath for physical or spiritual ailments, the flower and the leaves. Marigold, marigold is a specific as a bath for spiritual healing to ward off all manner of spiritual diseases that we have already mentioned and is also a common herb to use um, to help um, uh, eliminate menstrual cramps as a tea three times a day for three days before menstruation. Gumbo limbo. If you've been to Belize, you know this red shaggy bark tree, which is the natural remedy for the poison wood. And when you get poison wood, your flesh looks a lot like the bark of this tree, red, peeling, and inflamed. So this is the gumbo limbo all chopped up, and we use that for poison wood uh, conditions as a bath. We use it as a tea to build the blood, I put it in my, uh, my jungle juice because it's mild tasting and very rich in iron and minerals. And this one, I'm sure if you've been to Belize again, you see this everywhere, donkey's ears, pheasant tail, sheave, yak, tun, each. Medicinal plant growing on the eye of a stone. It only grows on stony hillsides. Don Eligio used this as a steam bath for paralysis, 
musculoskeletal problems and anyone who had experienced a, a backache due to um, getting a cold breeze or a viento against the back. And finally, I'm done. <laughs> Lasted a little bit longer than I thought, but I dedicate this to mi maestro Elmero Jimen Don Eligio Ponti, 1893 to 1996. And he's answering the question, who was your teacher? God was my teacher. And look at that charming, charming, laughing face. Remember, Don Eligio was, was the doctor clown. He loved to make people laugh. He uh, used to say that after his wife passed away, he had to sleep in his hammock all by himself. And he'd say, Rosita, you brought me a lovely wool blanket. I really do appreciate it. It keeps me warm unless I turn over. And when I turn over, that blanket falls to the ground and I'm alone again in my hammock, shivering. But when my wife was alive, I had a blanket of guts. And if I turned this way, she pulled me to her and all night long, kissing and hugging and telling secrets. I remember just to tell another uh, joke that Don Eligio always told his clients that after his wife had passed away for seven years, he thought it was time to go about the village and try to find a widow that he could marry for his older years. And he'd say, I have as much to give her as I am asking of her. So he went to visit the widows. He put in his teeth and put on his hat and put on his shoes. He had a, a nice shirt, that sh very shirt there that his wife made for him before he passed away. And he would go visit the widows. And then one widow said to him, marry you? You're an old man. I don't want to marry an old man. I want a young man. And Don Eligio said, yes, I'm old, but my money's not old. Okay. <laughs> All right, Steve. I'm done. All right, Rosita. That was really interesting. It was Thank really, you. Really good. And you've got some good comments here. Um, people call it fascinating. Um, one question I see, and then I'll go down to the bottom. Uh, it was back when you were talking about the primicia. And like, yes. is that roughly equal to a ceremony or yes. is it a particular kind of ceremony? Yeah, it's a ceremony, a particular kind of ceremony in that it is addressed to the nine benevolent Maya spirits. There is a cantico, which is a chant in Maya that the person who is performing the ceremony says, and there are participants, respondents, who answer and repeat the prayer back and forth. Yeah, it's a uh, ancient Maya ceremony and um, Don Eligio um, entrusted me with the Maya Primicia and asked me to do nine Primicias every year, which I do, I keep my promise. I'm gonna take a moment to turn on some lights and I'll take another question. All right. <clears throat> Hey, Gail, you turned on your uh, video. <laughs> okay, it was just getting a bit dark. Okay, another question? All right, well, Gail says, what a unique and fascinating presentation. I look forward to learning more. Many of my former colleagues were from Central American countries, and there were many who spoke of their grandparents' traditional healing and teas. And thank you for your years of learning and for reaching out to ensure that the story be told and documented. Thank you very much. And Tara is asking uh, for the marigold tea, do you use the leaves and the flowers? Yes, both leaves and flowers, a small handful, what can fit into the palm of your hand, three cups of water, boil, lightly for five minutes, set it aside to steep for 15 minutes, and then drink one cup three times a day before menstruation. All right. 
And does anybody else have any more questions? You can unmute and ask your question if you want. Marilyn says, very grateful to Rosita and the Aslander for this presentation, a wonderful gift to humanity. Thank Thanks, you, Marilyn. All right, any more questions? Any comments? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Fascinating presentation. All right, I don't see anything more. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think I went a little bit longer than I had intended, but as I said, it's a very big story to tell. That's perfectly okay. And the people, <laughs> the 21 people that were here uh, stayed tuned. They, uh, it, It's great that you went over. I know you were thinking about talking for, for like 45 minutes, uh, but I'm so glad you did. It was very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it very much. And I uh, visited San Antonio a couple of times last year when I went to Belize. And the Maya name for San Antonio uh, was Oshmulka, oh. place of three hills, because uh -huh. they decided to build the village in this sort of little like valley and up the hills of the uh -huh. three different uh, hills. And you mentioned a lady named Shish. And that, when I lived in Belize in the 70s, my best friend uh my maya friend um his last name was sheesh so that that's interesting to me uh, i know probably he... one of her children she had 15 children 45 grandchildren 107 great grandchildren wow yeah that's that's truly the definition of a matriarch yeah uh-huh yeah they had a little uh well, they had horses and stuff, but they were right down by the river. Um, I right believe that that was one of one of um, Miss Juana's children. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, right down by the river, right. <laughs> <laughs> and who is that, Tara? Did you want to say anything? Quick question. Um, thank you so much, Doctor Arvigo, and um. How can we stay updated on when your next classes and workshops, when and where they are? Yeah, you go to the Abdominal Therapy Collective website, abdominaltherapycollective.com. I, uh, with other women, I formed a collective of, of practitioners. And uh, we are the ones who are carrying Don Eligio's uh, knowledge Don Eligio's treatments in spiritual healing and abdominal therapy to the world. Abdominaltherapycollective.com. Got it. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm simply Rosita Arvigo at Gmail. All right. <clears throat> and Marilyn asks, is there any danger of losing the plants with the climate change and other human mistakes? Oh, yes, yes, yes. When I started with Don Eligio in the 1980s, he was really, really worried and upset. He said, uh, a traditional healer without plants is like a mechanic without tools. <laughs> Way back in the 1980s, he was already concerned about the burning up of, of, uh, of so much land all around San Antonio. When I, he said, when I first started, it was 10 minutes to walk where I could get plants. At the end of his career, it was 90 minute walk mm -hmm. where he could collect medicinal plants. And that's one of the reasons he needed a younger apprentice. It was very difficult for him in, in the later years. When I met Don Eligio, I was 40. Now I'm 82. Mm. Wow. 
and the little amulets you you said you made um were they cloth bound did you sew them together yes did, did they wear them with a string around the neck well many people um uh, you know women put them in their bras other people had uh, little uh, sacks that they put them in carry in their pockets or uh, tuck them into the uh, school backpack for the children. There's a, a piece of black cloth with a piece of uh, balsam bark, piece of copal, a little bit of rue, and a little bit of the uh, stone of Esquipulas, which is a little white sacred stone that comes from the town of Esquipulas in Guatemala. Where they have 50, the 50 a week. Yeah. 50 a week that I had to sew for him because his wife used to do it. When she passed away, his eyesight was failing, so he couldn't sew them anymore. So you know, it was a pleasure to be of use to mm. him. That's great. All right. Thank you so much for your work, dedication, and for bringing this into the future. Wonderful. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you all for attending. I see most people stay to the end, so I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay, and Jim. I'll, thank you so much. I'll let everyone know when the recording is up and you can uh, watch it again with, with your morning coffee and uh, bueno. share it with others. Okay. Buenas noches a todos. Buenas noches. Bye. Bye. <laughs>